In yet another sign of global economic recovery, India's gross domestic product jumped 6.1 percent last quarter, its first quarterly increase since 2007. India joins China, Japan and Indonesia as Asian countries on the rebound, benefiting from more than $950 billion of stimulus from the region. But some economists warn that India's recovery may be short-lived as drought threatens to reduce harvests and spur food inflation. Well, here to discuss all of these topics, Ron Shaw, the founder and managing partner of Gina Ventures, which is a private equity firm based here in New York, says he's not surprised by the acceleration of economic growth in India. So he's here on set with his assessment of the markets and stock picks, how average investors can take advantage of the India story. Welcome, Ron. Hi. So set the stage for us. What's really driving the stock market growth? A lot of it has to do with the prime minister starting his second term. There's been a lot of um, kudos to him on how he's fueled the markets. Explain. So basically, the uh, the past administration that was in office was marked by having a lot of conflict. So it was a, it was a factional government. What happened recently was that the the new the prime minister that's in now, the re-election occurred with an overwhelming victory. What that means is he has to seek less partisan support, and he can do a lot better of a job of getting reforms passed in government. This instills conflict. Confidence in markets. So what kind of reforms? Infrastructure type stuff? Can you detail that? Sure. Mamon Singh used to be the finance minister for a long time. He has a, he's a huge veteran of, of the finance market. So what he's doing is he's liberalizing markets. We're moving towards greater FDI, foreign direct investment into India. We're looking at a little bit of more liberalization in the retail sector as well as uh, basic infrastructure and industries. So the economists are calling for India's economy to grow 9% each year for the next three years. Fair assessment or overly optimistic? I believe it's a fair assessment. I think 9% is a little optimistic. I think we're looking at a, bit, a little bit closer to 8%. The growth in India, which is very different from China and must be noted, is that it's a domestically driven economy. So unlike China, which is, depends highly on exports, India is driven by domestic companies and the surging middle class in India. So then what are those top growth industries in India? Uh, we, we like three sectors in India. And those, uh, first, we like life sciences. We think India has for a long time played in the generic space, but it's now moving towards innovation. So you're going to see a lot more new drugs being developed out of India, a lot more partnerships like big companies like Pfizer and Glaxo moving in India, doing partnerships. We like the manufacturing industry. We think that's been a huge growth area. India is like in their industrial revolution as, as the U.S. had many decades ago. And, and I think uh, that's going to be a big sector of growth. With your private equity fund, what kind of deals are you looking to do with uh, Indian connections? Uh, well, what we we do in India is again in our three sectors that we like, which is infrastructure services, so construction companies and real estate. You know, India's biggest weakness right now is this, its lack of infrastructure. So we're seeing a huge amount of investment in that area. Uh, we also like the manufacturing industry. I think strategically, India presents a huge growth opportunity as well as a cost reduction opportunity for American and European companies that need growth in this market. But aren't you concerned though, since India is such a turnaround story, since this is you know th this growth is so new, it was such a it was a totally different story last year. It was declines as part of the global picture, of course. Yeah, I mean, I think what, we, what you have to examine is the basis uh, that India plays in. So I'll give you an example. In automobiles, uh, the density of automobiles, there's 11 cars for every 1,000 people. So there's a huge room. Whoa, that's yeah. unbelievable. Yeah, there's huge room for growth in the Indian market. This is very different from areas like Brazil, where there's like 200 cars per 1,000 people. So there's a, a, an enormous cushion for growth. I think the markets were curtailed last year because of high borrowing costs, high interest rates. Now now there's reforms taking place, a stimulus plan is keeping borrowing costs low, commodities have come under control, so it's a, it's a more favorable environment. So how are U.S. companies, which U.S. companies are taking advantage of this picture? I think that you're see, slowly starting to see, and I'll start with autos because that's been in the, in the news lately, I mean Ford and GM have all announced big plans in to, to sell into India. Harley Davidson made a big announcement last week to start selling uh, bikes in India. So I think what we're starting to see and what needs to happen is big U.S. companies realizing that they need to plant their flag in the Indian market establish a brand and start selling to that growing Indian consumer. Are you seeing a reflection in share price in Ford and Harley-Davidson since you mentioned those uh, companies yet? Is the I, India story priced in or is it uh, yet to be? I'm it, looking for tips here. Yeah, <laughs> I, I think the India story is not yet priced in. Uh, it's, it, the, the stocks have not reflected this growth because the numbers are still very small in India. The point is, can they set up a base and start creating the brand, which takes time? There are some companies that are going to get immediate gains out of India, like pharmaceutical players. So Pfizer and, and uh, Sanofi Aventis. They've started making acquisitions and started making deals to, to sell into India, which is going to reflect immediately. And some Indian firms that you brought along is the stocks keep an eye on Tata Motors, similar probably in the 
Giano theme that you're describing, Mahindra and Mahindra, Maruti, Suzuki, India. Um, we only have about 30 seconds here, so pick sure. one and expand on it. Sure. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I'll, pick, uh, I'll pick Tata Motors. So Tata Motors is, is, a, is a big story. Everyone knows about it because of the big acquisition they did of Jaguar Land Rover. Now, as I mentioned to you, the two big challenges in India, infrastructure and brand building. Indian companies have not yet built global brands. So we're going to see if Tata can buy Jaguar Land Rover and turn it into a, a profit-yielding okay. engine. Okay. Ron Shah, founder, managing partner of Gina Ventures. So thanks for your Thank time. You.